Hello everyone and thanks again for joining this webinar. My name is Rebecca Romsett and I work with FAO's program on mitigation of climate change in agriculture that we call MICA. I'm co-facilitating some of the online communities of practice on climate change in agriculture that were started on MICA. And um, I thought I'd just explain quickly for those of you who are not familiar with MICA that uh, the main goal of this program is to support developing countries in their contributions to mitigation of climate change and as well towards climate smart agriculture. Online communities of practice have played an important part in that effort and I will soon tell you more about how. But first, the agenda. Uh, during my presentation we will go through first why a community of practice I will also tell you briefly about how it all began for us and finally what are the achievements and benefits of the communities with a focus on the contributions of the members. Many of you are already members or even facilitators of some online communities but um, the general definition of an online community is that it consists of people who share a concern or a passion for something that they do and learn how to do it better, better as they interact regularly in a shared forum. And communities, you can uh, describe it as an approach used for knowledge exchange that is used by various organizations. And they can be referred to as either technical networks, study circles, regular seminars or even coffee table discussions. But what we will focus on here today are the online fora. And when it comes to climate change and agriculture, there is a need to share expertise and experience among practitioners. And communities can be an efficient tool for that. And as illustrated in this infographic, you can see some of the key components um, that a community of practice include, and we will soon look more into detail on that. So, this figure shows uh, the key components of the online communities. And first and foremost, we have the domain, which is the shared field of interest that the members are committed to, which is basically the topic. And in our case, in the MICA case, that has been climate change and agriculture. We then have the actual community, which consists of members who interact regularly and learn together. We then come to the actual practice, which is the key knowledge resources and the shared practical experience on, in this case, climate change and agriculture. Next, um, for these activities, we need uh, a space. We need a place where these activity, uh, activities can take place. And that we call the fora. And in our case, we're using different kinds of fora for different purposes. For example, we have the email-based exchanges on what we call dgroups. And there you can, if you remember there, you can receive emails either every time someone posts something or either as a weekly or a monthly digest. We also have a, a LinkedIn group where people can, the members can post information. And then we have the webinars, which we're doing right now, which is, uh, we're using the Adobe Connect uh, platform to, to do that. And as well, we have uh, the website. We use the Mika website and also, which is a FAO website, but also other websites where we post information about our learning activities, for example. Then we come to the facilitators, which Maria will tell, uh, tell you more about during her presentation a little later. Um, but just to define what it is, the facilitators are the actors who help the community to reach their objectives. So they are basically the people who guide the community across the online fora. And that could be different people for, for different, uh, different fora. And we have a, a team that is doing that, myself included, and, and also Maria. We then come to the packaging, which is what we do with this information provided by the members. 
And uh, for example, uh, one thing that we have done in the Mika team is that we created uh, an information brief on agroforestry that uh, was based basically on the exchanges with the members. I hope this has given you a clear idea of what an online community is. Um, and we will now move on to the MICA facilitated communities. As you can see in this figure, we have today 11 communities with a total of over 11,000 members. So that has grown quite significantly in the recent years. And these members are spread over at least 129 countries. And you can also see in this figure that the members come from different sectors. For example, civil, civil society workers, researchers and students, officers from ministries, and also people working for intergovernmental agencies, such as, for example, FAO. As mentioned, we have different uh, communities with different focuses. The biggest one is actually the LinkedIn group, which have almost 4,000 members today. Uh, the second biggest group is the D, uh, D group uh, on climate smart agriculture with over 3,000 members. And apart from these uh, two more general groups, we have a few subgroups which focus uh, on different topics, such as you can see here peatlands, NAMAS, and gender, for example. And there was a, a request quite early on uh, for even a, sp a Spanish-speaking group and a French-speaking group that we, that we later established as part of the MICA facilitated communities. I will now tell you a little bit about how it all began, the story of MICA, and it has certainly been a success story. It started already in uh, 2010 when the MICA program started and the community of practice um, component was included already from the beginning. Although uh, back then it, uh, we focused more on organizing learning events and not so much the actual community, community groups. And uh, we started it because we wanted to find a way to have the information that the practitioners need and to make them share their experiences. Because uh, we saw there was a big need to share information on climate change and especially on best practices. And also to share these results to decision makers. And the first community was started in 2012 on both D groups and LinkedIn. And as the members, um, the group of members started to grow, as you can see here, it grew from 40 members and then to almost 8,000 8, members. And as we saw, there was um, also a request from the members and as the group were very beneficial to them, uh, 10 other communities have since then been started. And as mentioned before, they all together now have over 11,000 members. And not only that, um, they have also contributed to more than 15 learning events, which includes as well over 55 expert presentations and more than 40 webinars. Moving on to the benefits of online communities. Um, we have here a list, and this has been uh, based on the feedback from the members of the different groups. And um, starting by the fact that these groups have made it um, an easier access to knowledge and learning materials, and as well peer support for different stakeholders. The members have also expressed that the um, communities contribute to a quicker sharing of innovations and also increased visibility on the different topics, as well as the quality of the exchanges. And this kind of knowledge, ex knowledge, knowledge exchange is also cost efficient, and it reduces both the need for traveling and, as a consequence, also the negative 
environmental impact that traveling actually has. Moving on to part two, um, the fact that this is going on online makes it also possible to reach a wider range of geographically dispersed practitioners with special knowledge. And it's also a good way to build awareness of climate change and capacities on the technical air area. And when it comes to us, for FAO and for the MICA communities, um, they have really provided us with reality checks of, of what works on the ground and provided us feedback that is extremely, extremely valuable. So that has been really one of the most important benefits. To sum this up, we're returning to the infographics, or at least a part of the infographics that I showed you in the beginning. So just to, co to conclude, online communities of practice, they can help with a lot of things to address climate change in an agricultural context. They address an increased need for joint learning, and they do this through innovation and sharing of experience, and as well, exchanging knowledge. So um, this infographics, you can have a look at it uh, more thoroughly if you want when you download the, the slides. So thank you very much, all of you, for, for listening. And on this slide here, you can see the cover of our latest publication, which is the guidebook for online facilitators, which draws on the experience for, uh, from the climate change and agricultural communities of practice. And you can download it here on the address that you see on the slide. And it will also be available for download at the end of this webinar. And you can also, of course, contact us if you have any questions on that. So uh, once again, thank you very much for listening.